Hello, Artful Manifestors. Thank you for joining me today. It is the eclipse today, the solar eclipse on April 8th. And as promised, I am announcing the winner for a free personalized tarot reading. So please join me in congratulating Francesca Bernasconi. Hopefully I'm saying your name correctly. If you didn't win this time, that's okay. I am going to have another uh, drawing on April 23rd. So if you didn't win this time and you would like to win the next free personalized tarot reading, all you have to do to qualify is subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, like this video, and type pink moon in the in the comments below if you're new to the channel welcome and if you are returning thank you thank you for returning thank you for your support thank you to everyone who has made comments shared videos liked subscribed it really means so much to me to have your support i read all of your comments i absolutely love them in today's reading, we're going to be finding out what the moon wants you to know about what energies are coming into your life and what positive changes those energies will facilitate. This is a timeless reading. It's meant for all zodiac signs. Any time that you come upon this reading is when you are meant to hear it. And I always encourage listeners to participate in the reading by asking your guides to help you decipher any sounds that you hear, images that you might notice, uh, decipher the message that I share, and perhaps there's something happening on your end uh, simultaneously that may be a clue, and that's specifically for you. We're in this together. And speaking of which, I love when you uh, communicate with each other in the comments because this is a wonderful community. You're all beautiful, beautiful people. I feel so fortunate to connect with you energetically every time I do a reading for you. All right, let's see what we have. Exalted moon, self-regulation. And moon flower, take a risk. And the Law of Attraction. You know what? There's two cards there. They both came out. I didn't even notice it, but I'm going to say that both of these cards are meant for pile number three. The Law of Attraction and Avoid Drama. Moon Mastery, Moon Madness. Love it. All right, so I'm going to put both of those there. Let me just scoot these down just a bit. All right, so you may already know which image or images you're most drawn to, but if you'd like the assistance of knowing what the crystals are, let me introduce those to you now. So for reading number one, we have Yellow Jasper. And for reading number two, we have Clear Quartz. Oh, oh my goodness, jumped out of my hand. Clear Quartz. And for reading number three, we have Angel Light. All right, those are the three choices 
let your intuition be your guide whichever one you are most drawn to is probably the message meant for you you're always welcome to listen to two or all three messages as they may shed additional light on your situation or it may give you information about different areas in your life you'll find a link to those readings in the description box below Hello, pile number one. Welcome to your reading. You chose the card Exalted Moon Self-Regulation as well as the crystal Yellow Jasper which boosts endurance, perseverance, and inner strength, helping one to overcome obstacles. And I just want to show you that this stone, this crystal has this interesting mark on it, just in case you see something in that. There we go. All right, let's see how these energies contribute to what the cards reveal about what the moon wants you to know about what energies are coming into your life to facilitate a positive change or changes. I do put the names of all the cards that I use in the description box below if that's something you're interested in. You know what? I feel like this card really wants to reveal itself. Let's see. Small steps, big accomplishments. All right, and we see a sea turtle and a land tortoise. And you know what's coming to mind is Turtle Island, the way that turtle or tortoise, whichever it is, is standing on that continent on the globe. All right, let's keep going and see what else we find out? What does the moon want pile number one to know about the energies coming into their life to facilitate a positive change? All right, we have Aquarius. and moon i love that we're getting a message from the moon and we got the moon card and doesn't it look like an eclipse what's coming to my mind right now is that even though the moon is I believe 400 times smaller than the sun. It's got to be more than that, but I think that's what it is. Um, because it's, uh, I, I know it's 400 and 400, but I could be getting the details incorrect. If you know, please put it in the comments. I want to say that it's 400 times smaller than the sun but because it's four, it's 400 something, it's not miles, it's greater than that, um, distance from the sun that it has the uh, illusion or the power 
to block out the sun's light. Even though it's so small, it can block out the sun's light because of it being closer to the earth and the sun being so far away. Perception. All right, and Aries, oh my goodness. The eclipse is taking place in Aries. Wow. I just love the validation and synchronicity of the cards. Amazing, absolutely amazing. What are the odds? All right, let's get some tarot cards and see what other information we can get about what the moon wants you to know at this time. But what energies are coming into pile number one's life to facilitate positive change? All right, we have Six of Swords. And King of Wands. What's really standing out to me this time are the dragons. We see a dragon here and there's dragon, a dragon on the shield and dragons on this throne. And of course, at the time that I'm doing this reading is the year of the dragon. King of swords, wow, two kings. Amazing. And this shield looks like it has the sun on it. And that's right above the moon card. And Princess of Cups. Okay, I want to read to you what the creator of the, this deck has to say about this card. Remember, as within, so without. In other words, when you're filled with tumultuous inner emotions, your external life is likely to reflect that. However, pulling this card suggests that no matter what you've been going through, being at peace with your feelings is the key to success. Even if your feelings are intense, breathe through them so they don't cause outward turbulence. That is your magic. Think of yourself as a sorceress or sorcerer and stay centered now. For best results, bring compassion empathy and unconditional love to your current situation. You have all that you need to sort the situation out. Keep your feet on the ground. Ask what would nourish me in this situation. Emotional honesty is called for. Allow someone else to express their emotions. Slow and steady wins the race. I love that it says slow and steady wins the race because we have this turtle here, which also, you know, immediately when I see it, I think of the tortoise and the hare. Slow and steady wins the race.
small steps, big accomplishments. You know, these sea turtles swim thousands of miles every year and land turtles are very much connected to Mother Earth. There again is that idea of being grounded because they're so close to the earth. And also these animals bury their eggs in the sand. This sea turtle buries its egg or in the ground is what I meant to say. They bury their eggs in the sand, but the sea turtles, you know, they don't lay their eggs in the water, even though they live most of their life in the water. They lay their eggs on the beach. And then when those little baby turtles hatch, first they have to, you know, develop muscles by cracking out of their own little shell on their own and then they have to crawl all the way to the water. And there's such a, a desire to get to that water that, you know, there's no obstacle that stops them. And even though they're so teeny tiny, uh, they are determined to make it to the water. And this card's energy is about accomplishing things over time, doing things that uh, take small steps on a consistent basis to create strong foundations and lasting results. The Six of Swords represents a transition or a journey from troubled waters to calmer shores. It indicates that you are moving away from challenging situations or emotions and heading towards a more stable and peaceful state. The energies coming into your life involve leaving behind what no longer serves you and embracing a period of healing and resolution. Love that for you. The King of Wands embodies passion, creativity, and leadership. His presence suggests that you are being empowered to take charge of your life with confidence and enthusiasm. The energies entering into your life include a newfound sense of purpose and ambition, guiding you towards your goals with determination and creativity. Aquarius is the water bearer. We see this water bearer giving water to someone else in this vessel. And you know, there's water here. The moon controls the tides. We have water in this card, even though it's a swords card, we have water here and of course the cups water here so i feel that it's really your emotions that will be cluing you into what is going to be best for you as far as changes go the energies may bring in different types of situations, but it's how you feel about these situations that are going to encourage you to change your perception. The Aquarius card is also about recognizing your own values versus 
uh, maybe a, a philosophy that you've adopted or a philosophy that's been um, indoctrinated into you, uh, whether it's through a teacher or a family member or society, uh, these aren't always the best path, the best philosophies, beliefs for each individual. Each individual has to come to recognize through their own inner wisdom, through their own connection with source, what is best for them. And so the energy of Aquarius and the King of Wands is, you know, giving you the insight to change your perception about these beliefs, these philosophies, and giving you the inspiration, motivation, passion, and energy to facilitate these changes to so that what you're doing um, and how you're doing it is more in alignment with your core values, your authentic nature. The King of Swords symbolizes intellect, clarity, and decisiveness. He indicates that you are called to approach situations with logic, reason, and a sharp mind. The energies entering your life encompass a heightened ability to think critically, make informed decisions, and communicate effectively. This may lead to clarity and understanding in various areas of your life. And it's interesting that we have the King of Swords the epitome of the logical analytical mind right above the moon which is more the subconscious mind and so what i see is that you're gonna have a unified mind you're gonna be one of those What's happening is that your right and left brain are uh, unifying. They are presenting themselves equally in situations where you can recognize your emotions, but rather than getting swept away by your emotions, you'll be able to apply this understanding this logic, this analysis, and be able to come up with the best approach to the situation. So the emotion will bring awareness to something, and then you'll have the intellect to address it in the best way. So it's a great coupling of both of these powers, which is absolutely amazing. The Princess of Cups is like the Page of Cups and she represents emotional exploration, intuition, and new beginnings in the realm of feelings. Her presence suggests that you are opening yourself up to the realm of emotions, intuition, and creativity, which to me is very much like the moon energy. So again, we have this idea of you balancing those things. You will be um, able to explore your inner world and connect with your emotions and embrace new opportunities for emotional growth and expression. You know, it's really like this yin and yang balance energy, male, female, uh, 
assertive, action-oriented, and receptive, intuitive, analytical, both. This really great balance and utilization of the whole mind of both of these energies uh, that seem to be almost opposite, but they're actually complementary. You know, uh, in order to give something, there has to be something there to receive it. And in order to receive something, there has to be something giving something, right? And so it's both of these energies in play. And Aries act, again, it's that action. And so you're using your intuition, your feelings, your emotions to receive information. And then you're using your intellect to analyze it and come up with a good plan and the Aries energy to put that plan into motion, which is absolutely amazing. The other thing about Aries is that there is a caution to take your time, not to do things too quickly because that's when mistakes can happen. So remember the turtle with uh, doing things slowly, consistently, and getting them done and making the results last, rather than rushing to the finish line and m making a little minor error or something that in the long run is going to make you go back and redo it and take a little bit longer. So yeah, pretty amazing. Overall, the moon wants you to know that positive changes are on the horizon. Guided by combination of intuition, leadership, intellect, emotional exploration. And these changes may involve transitioning away from challenging situations, turbulent waters, and embracing new opportunities with confidence and enthusiasm, gaining clarity and understanding, and exploring your emotions on a deeper level, understanding what they're telling you, trusting your inner wisdom, following your intuition, and remaining open to this transformative journey ahead. And I noticed that there is another turtle in this card as well. Very interesting. That is your message pile number one. So excited for you for this powerful unification of the mind and uh, this great abilities that you're going to have as a result. Absolutely amazing. That is your message. Wishing you the best. The light in me recognizes the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You chose the card Moonflower, take a risk. Inviting you to adventure, as well as the crystal quartz, clear quartz, which I feel like so many people are drawn to different stones that have color and um, maybe they seem, you know, because they're more colorful that they seem more enticing and maybe the clear quartz seems common, but because it doesn't have color, it doesn't influence, it doesn't put any kind of influence on it it doesn't change the lens it's 
it brings clarity and it helps to balance all the chakras. Some stones are connected to one or two chakras, but the clear quartz crystal it can help to balance all the chakras and it helps to amplify your intentions. So we'll see how these energies fit into what the rest of the cards have to say about what the moon wants you to know is entering your life to help facilitate positive change. I do put the names of all the cards that I use in the description box below. Two cards came out. We'll take both. You are what you think. Love that. And transformation. Beautiful. You are what you think. All right, we have third house communication. And Juno partnership. I love that these two cards both have two birds. And you have two birds here. Wow, because you have the flamingo. And I want to say that it's a cockatiel. I'll check the book in a minute. Birds, birds, birds. You know, there is another reading that I mentioned that birds were a sign for you. If you happen to choose that reading and you heard that message, please let me know. Or perhaps you already, even if you didn't hear that particular reading, know that you connect with birds. All right, let's get some tarot cards and find out some more information. Ace of Pentacles. The High Priestess. Eight of Pentacles. And the Sun. I love that. Perfect for the solar eclipse. You know, the Moonflower Take a Risk card, we see here a road and a compass directions. So perhaps you will take a trip. Um, whether it's an actual trip, it's the energy of taking a trip, of going on an adventure, of doing something new, of being brave and bold. The Ace of Pentacles represents new beginnings, 
opportunities and abundance in the material realm. It indicates that you are on the brink of embarking on a new path, right? Or venture that promises stability, prosperity, and growth. The energies entering your life include opportunities for financial and material abundance, as well as the potential to manifest your goals and desires in the physical world. You are what you think. If you have any doubt in yourself or you don't feel worthy of reward, accomplishment, uh, recognition, this card is letting you know that you absolutely do. The moon wants you to know that, well, Marianne Williamson said it best, your playing small does not serve the world. So the brighter you shine, the more brilliant that you are, the better off everybody else will be. Flamingos aren't born pink, but because of the krill that they eat, uh, the shrimp that they eat, whatever they eat that contains that pink color is actually what turns them pink. So they're not born that way. They become that way through what they consume. And so the message is that what you are consuming with your mind, what you are telling yourself is creating your reality. And I love that we have transformation right next to it. This is actually a phoenix, not a cockatiel like I thought. It's actually a phoenix. And I love this wave of energy that's coming out of this card. I also love that you have a sun here and you have the sun here. And we asked for a message from the moon. But the light that we see in the moon is a reflection of the sun's light. And so again, we have this message of whatever it is that you're thinking is what's going to be reflected in your life. I want to look at the guidebook for these cards. Let me, give me one moment. All right, so the Flamingo's Medicine suggests scripting for altering and transforming your inner beliefs. Scripting is the process of rewriting your story to program your subconscious with a new, more profound understanding of your existence. You will need to acquire a journal and dedicate at least five to 10 minutes every night to write out your new reality. Scripting before bed sets up your subconscious to have these ideas implanted while sleeping. Scripting is easy and fun. It's writing out the reality you intend to happen as if it's already happened. For example, one might say, I'm gonna show you the Book. I am so excited I created my own business and it happened so easily. I am connecting with people on such deep levels. I'm so grateful I found the person of my dreams. So of course that's just an example. You'll write what resonates for you, your desires. Scripting is intentional brainwashing. And about after a month of scripting every night, you will see your world totally shift into your new story. So let's see what transformation is about in this book. The Phoenix. Phoenix comes with information, informative medicine. He says you are on the verge of a total transformation. Although you may still be living a current reality that your past self manifested, 
the medicine of this card foretells a profound change is approaching. You're in the space in between jumping timelines. I love that. This timeline is your transition from an old version of yourself into the new and evolved version of yourself. Do not get caught in the trap of believing your current reality defines what lies ahead. It is very possible you are projecting old limiting beliefs onto the situation. Trust that all your effort the last months and years are in the alchemical process of manifesting. You are now in the moment before you shift into your fullest self. You must believe the highest version of yourself is waiting and ready to be self-actualized. And I love that this card looks like a portal. And, you know, we talked about you embarking on this new venture, this new path. And we see this road here. I love this serendipity, absolutely amazing. The High Priestess embodies intuition, wisdom, and inner knowing. She represents the subconscious mind and the mysteries of the unseen realms. Her presence suggests that you are being called to trust your intuition and tap into your inner wisdom. The energies entering your life include heightened intuition, spiritual insight, and a deeper connection to your subconscious mind. This may lead to profound insights, spiritual growth, and a greater understanding of yourself and the world around you. And notice the spider web. I've mentioned this in readings before, but that to me is very much connected to writing and the Greek story of Arachne. We have with this card, the scripting idea, and here we have the web and it even looks like, you know, these things are coming out of her head. So again, it's this idea of what you think is creating your reality and transforming your life. You're going to be stepping into this whole new experience, this whole new dimension. The Eight of Pentacles signifies dedication, hard work, and mastery of skills. It indicates that you are committed to honing your craft and improving yourself through diligent effort and practice. The energies entering your life include opportunities for skill development, education, and personal growth. This may involve investing time and energy into mastering a new skill or refining your existing talents to achieve greater success and fulfillment. And of course, one of these skills would be the scripting. And whether you actually journal it or you lay in bed and think about it, uh, you just become more aware of what you're thinking and change any negative thought patterns into positive thought, thought patterns. All of that is going to ref, help you to refine your skills. Uh, so it's refining the skills in how you think, refining the skills in uh, how you manifest and refining the skills in what er other areas of life that you want to refine your skills in. Which could also include communication. And the interesting thing about communication is this third house is about not only how we communicate with others, how we receive communication via text, emails, 
mail, word of mouth, uh, any kind of media, how we distribute it, how we receive it, but also how we communicate with ourselves, which is how we think. So again, there's this idea of you changing how you think about yourself, how you think about situations, what you believe about yourself, what you believe you deserve, what you believe is fair and just for yourself. Because remember, your plain small does not serve the world. It's better for you to be the best version of yourself, the glorious version of yourself. That's what's going to best help you and the world. Those around you, your community, your friends, your family, the better you are, the shinier you are, the better everyone around you will benefit. The sun represents joy, success, and fulfillment. It signifies a time of happiness, positivity, and abundance in all areas of your life. The energies entering your life now include blessings, opportunities, and a renewed sense of vitality and optimism. This card suggests that you are entering a period of expansion, growth, and enlightenment where you can bask in the warmth of life's blessings and experience profound joy and fulfillment. Absolutely love that for you. I never noticed this before, but look at the little arms on this little sun down here, this little being outstretching their arms. Embracing life is what comes to mind. All right, I wanna look at the guidebook for this card. Give me just one moment. All right, so Juno, I'm just gonna to read to you what the book says. It's, it's an asteroid. The asteroid Juno points out how you may have been trained to choose between love and work and offers clues on how to balance them instead. This asteroid was named after the daughter of Saturn, wife of Jupiter, mother of Mars. She is queen, the organizer of society, and she rules the roost. Juno and Jupiter modeled an uneasy but equal partnership that took a lot of work and had great rewards. True partnership is a spiritual path. Its sacred acts are the practice of healthy relationship skills. These skills begin within. So I love that it's talking about how you feel about yourself. And again, it goes back to these cards. It also says, be responsible for your own connection to the creative source, spirit, and your emotions. Don't ask another to carry your heart for you as it makes it hard to accept their unique path. Live out your ambition through your own work rather than through your mate, children, employees, or coworkers. If you do so, you can encourage others' growth and exploration along with your own, and so create the foundations of great relationships and a sense of community. If you don't, you can devolve into jealousy or create monsters. If you want to be in a partnership but or not, examine any belief or training that said that you have to give up what matters to you in order to partner up. If it's your choice to work alone, accept it. If not, expand that view and invite fresh possibilities. 
I love that. You're transforming your life, transforming yourself, transforming your relationships by changing how you think and viewing yourself as being brave enough, strong enough, capable enough to step through that door of opportunity into this new dimension, into this higher vibration where you are the best version of yourself, shining brightly like the sun, like a star. Absolutely love that. Amazing message for you, pile number two. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. I was going to say pile number two. Pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You chose the angel light, which helps to Increase your connection to angels, spirit guides, your higher self. It also helps to facilitate peace and it encourages better relationships, uh, sisterhood, brotherhood. So I love that you got that stone along with Moon Madness, avoid drama. I'm just going to put that up here so that we have enough space for all your cards. And Moon Mastery, the law of attraction. And doesn't that look like sisterhood? Working together to manifest. Love it. All right, let's see what else we find out from the rest of the cards. I do put the names of all the cards used in my readings in the description box below if that's something that you're interested in. We have Face Your Fear. some of these oracle cards. All right, we have progression, journey, and Mid-Heaven Pinnacle. And Aries, love that. You know, Aries came out in pile number one in the exact same place. And of course, the solar eclipse is taking place in Aries. So I absolutely love this. You got two of the moon cards plus Aries in our message from the moon eclipse reading. All right, let's draw some tarot cards and see what else we can learn. What about what kind of energies are coming into your life at this time that the moon wants you to know about that will be facilitating a positive change in your life. Princess of Cups, which I believe did also come out in pile number one. Five of Pentacles. Eight 
Eight of Cups. And the Magician. You know, right away, what I notice is that this star and this star look very similar. The Princess of Cups is like the Page of Cups. And what the moon wants you to know is that the energies coming into your life are going to invoke a willingness in you to explore your emotions connect with your inner child and embark on a journey of emotional discovery and growth so that you can open yourself up to new emotional experiences and embrace your creativity and intuition And the way that this is gonna happen is through the energies of the Five of Pentacles and the Eight of Cups. So the Five of Pentacles is, you know, it represents hardship, struggle, feeling left out in the cold. Um, it could also be something financial or a, a material challenge. It's a feeling of lack or loss. Now, whether that's in finances or emotion depends on your situation. I feel for most of you that it is more of an emotional lack, a relationship, lack of connection, a sense of belonging, within a group or community. And the reason I say that is because it's surrounded by the Eight of Cups and the Princess of Cups. Of course, uh, this is a general reading, so take it as it resonates. For some of you, it very well could be a more material type of lack feeling. And so through this loss or this sense of lack or not belonging, you'll begin to um, find an inner strength to face adversity. You're going to remember that challenges are temporary and can lead to growth and transformation. You have also here, face your fear. And I'm gonna to get to that in a minute. I wanna tell you about the Eight of Cups first and then we'll come down here. The Eight of Cups is about leaving something behind that no longer serves you. And so it's this energy of lack, of feeling left out in the cold, of, um, feeling like you don't belong, whatever that energy is, again, whether it's emotional and in relationships or it's um, having to do with finances, you're leaving that situation behind, which is wonderful, right? You're leaving that energy behind. This energy is going to bring something to your attention and uh, then you're gonna be able to face your fear and leave this situation or thought process, uh, however it resonates for you, this energy. You'll be leaving this energy and embarking on a journey of spiritual growth and self-discovery. You are going to realize that whatever this is, it's not fulfilling you. So even if let's say that it is a relationship or a work environment or a community, 
uh, a chosen family or a biological family, you're going to experience this feeling of being left out in the cold, not belonging, lack, uh, or not having the resources that you require to recognize that it's time to you for you to move away from this energy and towards something new, which is amazing. Um, you're letting go of the past, embracing change, following your heart's true desires. You're trusting your intuition, pursuing your dreams with courage and determination. Face your fear. Uh, let me get the guidebook and tell you what it says. Uh, let's see. In one moment, this is a crow. And you know, crows will alert the rest of the forest of when danger's around. And giving them the opportunity to escape and survive. And crow is also the master alchemist. Alchemy was the practice of transmutation, turning base metals such as lead into a more valuable metal like gold. Many alchemists were interested in this science on a psychological level. We can apply the principle of alchemy to our own psychological development. Think about the power your pain holds. What if you could take the energy of all your trauma, fear, worry, and doubts and turn it into your greatest asset. Crow says that you can turn the energy of pain into your shining light. The key is that the consistent effort to manipulate your emotions to your liking. For example, let's say you are de dealing with a trigger that is bringing up fear. First, accept what you feel and then choose to transmute the energy if you are fearful of something and avoiding it, face it and deal with it. If you are lost in a trauma bu bubble, shift, choose to shift your physiology by movement and exercise. So in other words, uh, access those coping skills. Um, you know, Maybe you already know of which coping skills work, or maybe that's something you can uh, ask somebody about or get online about. Uh, there are tons of resources for it. If you're, it's basically saying take the action that is going to change your situation. So whatever this lack is that you're feeling, you're, you feel the lack of um, belonging, then find new people. You feel the lack of not looking the way you want to look, then take action to change the way you look. If you don't like how you feel, then uh, do something new to help facilitate new feelings. And of course, I say this not as, you know, I'm reading what the book says, but interpreting the message not as somebody telling you to do these things, but as that you will be doing these things. I see that you're going to be doing these things because these energies are coming to into your life to illuminate something so that you can let go of things that are hindering your growth, things that aren't serving you, so that you can reach that star. I love that in this, the very next card, look at that. It's like he's captured the star. So you're going to do it. It's just telling you this is how you're going to do it. You're going to experience this feeling that doesn't feel good, but it's going to give you the motivation and the inspiration 
to change your situation. In astrology, progressions speak of what happens uh, after that moment when you're born. So if you have ever had your natal chart done, it's like a snapshot of where all the planets are at that moment that you were born. But the progression is what happens the next few months. It's like these threads of fate that are being woven into your life. So it's like there will be certain things that you encounter, certain energies that you encounter, but of course you always have the free will to respond to those energies in whichever way that you choose. The guidebook says, progressions do not speak of a passing thing, but to big sweeping arcs of karmic fate to your soul's journey. Your present situation may not make sense in the short term because it has more to do with big karmic patterns and how those intersect with the karmic patterns of the world's progress and less to do with your daily existence. This is not a small obstacle or opportunity. This is part of a complex pattern. Every choice you make changes how it unfolds. Trust the tides and set your own sail. And so for many of you, as I mentioned, I feel that what you may be experiencing in lack could be uh, through a relationship like a family or a chosen family, a partnership. It could even be a work environment. You know, we spend so much time at work um, and you may not necessarily walk away from the relationship or the job, although for some of you that may be the answer, but you're definitely walking away from this energy of feeling like you don't receive what you want to receive or what you should receive or need receive or you're not getting what you need not having your needs met by external forces you're walking away from that type of energy i want to read to you what the guidebook says about midheaven pinnacle the Midheaven contains clues about how your family trained you to be visible in the world, your relationship to other people's authority and how you step into your own personal authority. It describes the future mountaintop, the pinnacle of your work in the world. The Midheaven is the highest point of the chart where the sun would be at midday. This most public visible point of the chart acts like the flagpole on top of your personal castle. Traditions, other people's expectations, or your family history may be complementary to your idea of your own potential, or they may be hurdles to overcome as you find your true path. Underneath all worldly sense of ambition is a soul's longing to live out its potential. Listen to the call. Amazing. It's just amazing how all of these cards go together so well. And, you know, I think part of it, too, is connecting to your higher self. So you are beginning to strengthen the communicative lines between spirit and yourself, between your higher self and your avatar. You have a clear understanding of what you need, of your intuition, your 
inner guidance system. Your higher self is never going to steer you wrong. The magician represents personal empowerment, manifestation, and taking action to create positive change in your life. And we see here on the Aries card, act. So again, you have this feeling, you have an increase in your intuition, and this feeling is, even if it's an uncomfortable feeling, it's going to give you the courage to face your fears and change something, to act, to walk away, to change how you think, to move away from a belief or uh, a thought process. Or it could also be an unhealthy relationship. It, this is a general reading, so take it as it resonates. The energies entering your life involve harnessing your inner resources and abilities to manifest your dreams and desires. The moon is encouraging you to tap into your creativity, confidence, and inner strength to manifest positive change and transform your life for the better. You're going to be able to focus and harness your inner resources. You're going to be having increased willpower, power of intention to manifest your desires and achieve your goals. Amazing. I just love that. I mean, this, these cards just perfectly show the picture. I feel like in this picture, you're, it's like this is your higher self. And it's grabbing this energy from the solar eclipse and it's giving it to you and it's raising your vibration so that what once used to feel comfortable no longer feels comfortable to you. And you're gonna have the courage to move away from it and to make changes and become this empowered, resourceful person who, who holds the power, the energy of stars. Absolutely amazing and beautiful. I love this reading for you. I hope that you can see how incredible you are, how beautiful you are. And let's just, before we go, look at what the book says about the law of attraction. <laughs> okay, I love this. You've made magic before and you can make it again. Expecting the best will often attract it. Self-doubt stops manifestations. Distance yourself from naysayers. Speak your intentions into being. Become clear about your desires. Once you have that clarity, write down your wishes at the next new moon, which by the way, that's today. The day, April 8th, the day of the eclipse is also the new moon. Just doing that will galvanize your intentions and steer your next steps. Visualizing your dreams will also help you to achieve whatever you're aiming for right now. Feel your wishes as real as already come true. Feel it in your body. You can create your desired outcome. I love this for you. Absolutely love this gift that your higher self is giving you. You know, pages, this is a princess, but it's like a page 
are messages, they're messengers, and the message that you're receiving is directly from your higher self. Giving you this holy grail. Love that for you. Amazing. That is your message, pile number three. Absolutely beautiful. So happy for you. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye.